Nat 20. Welcome back to Nat 20. Uh, where in this, this episode, we'll be talking about the war of, war against humans. I really have fucked that up already, but I'll keep going. <laughs> Come on, Gage, it's a classic intro where we fuck it up. Yeah, definitely. Except usually we actually redo the intro, but not this time. <laughs> so just us. <laughs> so I'm I'm Gage the Dungeon Master, and I've got Clayton with me. who Places Blaze. Hey everybody! That was <laughs> wow! That was a Blaze's voice. <laughs> oh my god! It turns out I'm not actually Clayton. <laughs> yeah. So for this episode, we weren't actually able to get everyone together to record a regular. Uh, deal with demons episode so we're just going to talk about history because who doesn't love a history lesson of course hey i love history lessons yeah i actually kind of like history too like the sardana are actually something from history oh shit yeah like, <laughs> Gage is dropping hints but that's all i'll say for now <laughs> fuck <laughs> <laughs> keep drinking those shots Gage. Uh, i'll get you to spill eventually <laughs> Yeah, so we've had a few drinks right now, so just so you know, that's why we're being as not redoing this or intro weird as we are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and why I can't get Blaze's voice is not because of my own <laughs> personal ineptitude. <laughs> You're coming with us. I'll get it. Later. That's that's closer, days. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, so we're talking about the war against humans in this episode. So this happened, I think, two. 200 years before the setting that's happening in the deal with demons. You would know better than I. If I actually looked at my notes every once in a while, I would. I write <laughs> so many D&D notes and just never look at them again. Yeah. This is the only D&D like, uh, campaign I've looked at notes because for some reason I feel like I should be professional. <laughs> When in truth, like, every other thing, it's like, I fucking write down a page, yeah. and then, like, a day later, I throw it out because it's in the way of all my doodles. Well, it's the DM for this quest. I should actually try to remember all the facts about, like, when stuff happened, who's who, stuff that happened in the cities, and whatever, but... I, nope, I, I, I love that we have that. to remind you who characters Oh, are. yeah, yeah, that's so great. <laughs> yeah, like, when I couldn't think of uh, the name of the healer... Uh, Isadora? Isadora. Yeah. I don't even need my notes for that. Yeah. Well, I remembered that this time. Remember this time. Yeah. God, can you name? Here's a fun fact okay. for fans, all three of you. Uh, <laughs> 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 what's, <laughs> what's the name of the human girl we ran into while we were traveling with Cook Carl and Cochran? Because oh, uh, I remember. Because it's the same character as one of my favorite video game main protagonists. Sora. Sora. Yeah. You remember? I did. Yes. Yeah. Kingdom Hearts. It is Sora, Killable Kyle, and Will to Survive. Will to Survive! <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully we meet uh, Eye of the Tiger or Thrill of the Fight next. Because <laughs> I'm so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Gage, you're so funny. <laughs> what other songs do we have to do? Uh, we should... Uh, what's what's the next to back to little high little low <laughs> easy come easy go <laughs> well i have the tiger was just because it's a tiger and tabaxi so i did not make that connection anyways we were going to talk about the war which we should probably do since that's what this episode titled the war or something like that i haven't figured it out yet but whatever we'll anyway. save that for the editing process. <laughs> yeah, but... also known as when gage sits alone while i play smash bros <laughs> <laughs> alone in a cold dark basement hey i'm with you tonight <laughs> yeah so anyways uh the war started about 200 years before a deal with demons takes place. Uh, so how this started was uh, there was an uprising in Stillsby where, well, I guess not really uprising, but a change of leadership in Stillsby. It, for, lo for the longest time, it was an elf who was in charge, but eventually uh, the humans got enough... Uh, polling power or voting power to get a human in charge of Stills Stillsby. Did I say Stillsby at first? You did say Stillsby. I did. Okay, good. Thanks. <laughs> was it supposed to be Stillsby? Yeah, it was. Yeah. How many shots have you taken, Gage? Three. Well, <laughs> probably more like four because those are big shot glasses. <laughs> and then like two beers, but whatever. <laughs> okay, so... Ju just so everyone knows... 
Almost every single character I've seen Gage play has been an alcoholic. Hey, and, uh, Omalium is not an alcoholic. Oh, okay, sorry. Gage's other character, Omalium, the skeleton paladin, is not an alcoholic. Brother Whisper wasn't either. Oh, you were right. Brother yeah. Whisper wasn't. So the one pl- the one character I've played with them pretty much. I remember you as Airdron. Yeah, Airdron yeah. is literally drunk every session. Okay, so a little context here. So Airdron <laughs> is a winter Eldrin elf bard. Who is super depressed when he plays depressing music and is a total alcoholic. How could this happen to me? Yeah, so he only ever plays that song or like mistakes. Hurt by Johnny Cash or uh, Mad World. And he's just so much fun to play. I Every session with Aerodron is a treat yeah. and a joy. Anyways, back to the war. <laughs> <laughs> One day we'll get to the main topic of conversation. <laughs> I'll just stop talking, I'm sorry. No, no worries. I'm enjoying this, so... <laughs> okay, so, uh, the government of Silsby end up changing to a human being in charge. And after a couple years of pretty good actual leading, he led a campaign to kind of make Silsby a human-only city. Oh, dick move. And this happened. So a lot of, like, he sent guards against people if they didn't leave within like a few months or whatever and eventually it was most it was basically just a human city and then the leadership in Somersail changed to a human as well who happened to be related to the leader in Silsby let me guess Somersail was also going to be a human only city uh so the leader of Somersail the leader of Silsby convinced the leader of Somersail to get rid of the other races as well. And it worked. And this led to a lot of, like, scared, well, a lot of being scared from the other races, and they were just trying to get to whatever other cities they could go to. Most went to either Mall or uh, Chun or other places more to the west. Like uh, Aragon? Yeah. And then the humans were kind of dis- conniving with each other, and they decided that they should be spreading out more. Kind of like Hitler. Draw a comparison. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. So, not good guys at all. Not at all. Terrible at guys. All. I am amazed that Somersdale voted this guy in. <laughs> Hey, you guys know my cousin? Yeah, that racist dude. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I'm related to him. <laughs> you got my vote, bro. So eventually, they began expanding and growing their territory and taking over some of the part, some parts of the other cities and territories all around. So they kind of uh, pushed the halflings out of their homes first, then the gnomes, then orcs. Was this biggest to small? Uh, smallest to biggest here. <laughs> And then at this point, it was known around the country that this is happening, and no one was happy about it, so they decided to fight against them. And then there was a mass migration, for for a word, I guess, of humans going to Stillsby and Somersail in order to help out with this fight. To fight against the other races. Yeah. Then, about... Four months after this first started, the war began. It began in the city of Chun, where a t- terribly bloody fight that killed so many, that killed pretty much the entire city there. And the humans took over we, as well. Can't wait till we visit Chun then. I'm sure it's just full of rich history. <laughs> and uh, then they kept on spreading and spreading, and eventually. Uh, there were just so many battles going on all over that no one really knew exactly what was going to happen the next day. They could be taken over by humans the next day. Humans could be pushed back, possibly. Uh, everyone could die. Anything could happen. And then, after about a year of that, a year of that situation, humans were beginning to get more ground still and kind of beginning to win the war. And so, that's where every single race in Taldania joined the other races against humans. Viva la resistance! 
Also, see episode Viva la Revolution that was uploaded last week. <laughs> shameless. <laughs> they're watching our show right now, Gage. <laughs> what do we need to shameless plug for? <laughs> just start from episode one while we're at it. Just watch all the way up. Give us some views, please. Uh, so, anyway, uh, eventually the humans had taken over half of Teltania and. The war was getting more bloody and more bloody, and everyone was scared. They didn't know what would happen next. One of my favorite, uh, I'm getting off topic here, but one of my favorite character ideas that Zach, the guy who plays uh, Lazarus. Lazarus Sunstar in our campaign, his his idea was that he played a war forged that was, during this war, uh, was sent to like be a guard. Yeah, in one of the mountain caves to the north. Yeah, and then everyone just forgot about him. And he actually stayed there for years and years and years and years until the war was, like, well, well over. And then some random dwarf showed up and was like, you're still here? And that's the entire backstory for Zack's character. <laughs> one day we will see that war forge. Yeah. I will kill Lazarus Sunstar by myself. <laughs> I'll fucking kill the guy for you. There you go. You got no, your voice I got back. his voice. You know, there we go. Yeah. I, I don't care. I'll kill him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so continue though sorry i totally interrupted oh yeah no worries uh so eventually once everyone was a part of this war they were somewhat able to push back the humans this took another year to even push them back to like the next city or whatever and this kept going uh the other races were all on a roll and were able to beat them back to the two cities they started at, Silsby and Summerseal. On and a roll. It's <laughs> a good pun. Oh! You didn't even mean to? Yeah, that really? was unintended. No, that yeah. was fucking beautiful. <laughs> Gage is an accidental genius. <laughs> uh, and then they were able to lay siege to Silsby and Summerseal. And because these are two huge cities and there were still so many humans left to stand guard and fight, this took another, like, year and a half. Well, it took another about six months to get Stillsby, and then another eight months to get Summer Sail after that. And finally, the war against humans was finished. All of the human leaders and any important human figures were pretty much just killed to make sure that this wouldn't happen again, as well as any guerrilla fighters for humans. And uh, because of this, a lot of humans went underground or just went into hiding. And that's how the population died down so much? Yeah. Because I know in like our current campaign, there's like no humans. Yeah. And after sitting through this history lesson... Uh, if you are ca- all caught up with our current episodes, which you can find on YouTube, uh, <laughs> uh, ye, uh, I don't think we should help this guy with, what's, what's Ziggs bar? Ziggs Crate. Ziggs Crate. Crager. Ziggs Crager. Maybe we shouldn't put him in charge. Last human who was in charge really fucked things up. <laughs> He's a good guy. Is he though? I don't think I should be in charge. Well, I mean... Do you really want King Allen to be in charge? No, fuck King Allen. Yeah. You guys think we were just making jokes? I legit don't like King Allen. <laughs> I insulted him because I wanted to. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that is how the human race got to the numbers that they are today. And even after about 200 years, there's still not many of them. Some other things that happened during the war were there was a necromancer named uh so there's a necromancer named laris daw who happens to be the father of uh shavid daw yeah for some reason i can think how of do you i don't know name, i'm terrible bitch. with names you i made just him. i know i'm terrible with names like when i started working with working i didn't know anyone's name for like the first like Two or three months? It took oh, me so long. Let me put some context yeah. here. Gage and I, we used to work together in a restaurant. That's what, yeah. that's what he's referring to. Yeah. Honest, Gage, I thought you were super lame. <laughs> super lame. That's fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not going to turn this to a, a real-life origin story. <laughs> yeah. Say goodbye to Blaze next episode. <laughs> 
Just kidding. I wouldn't kill a character off. Again. Not a fan favorite. Ga- uh, Blaze is <laughs> clearly the best character in the campaign. Uh, so, anyways, uh, during the war, there was a necromancer named Lars Daw who made deals with a bunch of the fighters on both sides in order to pretty much give the fighters a, an extra life or rev- revival after death. Uh, and after they died the next time, then they'd then be bound to Laris Da to be a part of his army or antics, in air quotes. Okay. And then eventually, about a few years after the war, it was discovered that uh, Laris Da was going to create an army of undead to just take over the continent again. As if he wasn't sketchy already. Hey yeah. guys, uh, my name is Lars Da, and if you die, I'll bring you back to life for a small fee. <laughs> like, what do you say to a guy like that? Well, How do you pitch that, actually? <laughs> do you walk in there, you turn on your fucking uh, projector, your little pointer, and you're like, here uh, are the numbers of why you should give me money to bring all your dead soldiers back to life. Well, he pretty much said, I can give you another life after death. This war... Is a terrible thing, and you want to live after it. Pretty sure Anandog got another life after death. You yeah. have to watch a sick... Only for a year, though. Only for a year. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Never mind, I guess Lair's Dodd did have the better deal. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, he didn't turn into a the super dark <laughs> Batman ripoff. <laughs> <laughs> we go to the mall. 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 <laughs> I hear the weather in all is really nice. <laughs> yeah. uh, so Lars Da uh, pretty much just kept it a secret of his, the consequence of signing the deal. And that's why he got so many people to sign up and to be a part of his army later on when they died. What happened to this Lars Da? Uh, eventually, some adventures, which is another uh, camp like one-off campaign we ran that's right oh yeah. that's right yes i played a talking russian bear and in bear oh he has the greatest backstory do you want to do you want to explain it oh, so i think we have to because this one is the best this i think you you take the lead here gage okay uh, gage wrote the backstory for me and it is probably the craziest backstory i've ever heard in my life the the beginning is that bear, once known as <laughs> the bear, uh, wandered out of his cave after hibernating. Was he hibernating? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was hibernating. He wandered out. Usually when you're after hibernation, you're very hungry. So he found a field of berry bushes <coughs> uh, and he ate every single berry bush. And uh, why did he eat every single berry bush, Kate? Yeah, so first I want to state that this was initially Clayton's character idea because it's an NPC in a D&D world that he created. Uh, don't, and not to toot my own horn, but it's a pretty fucking dope. It is, yeah. <laughs> dope campaign. Yeah, uh, so he asked me to make uh, Baxter for it, and I was super happy because I I had the creative juices running at the time. <laughs> he read too much Hit, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> yeah, such a great book series. Okay, so Bear is a bear who is a tavern owner in one of his cities. Yeah, and he, he owns a small bear called Bear's Brewery in the uh, northern village frontier. Yeah, and he also makes ale and is an artist. And so right now I'll just read his backstory. So Bear, form- formerly known as Urga, is an Atlas bear who long ago gained the abilities to speak and do other human things. Long ago, before he could speak, he was just a regular cub of average size and intellect. But one day, he wandered off away from the family cave in search of some berries to saturate his hunger. On his epic quest for food, he stumbled upon a huge grove of berry bushes. He ate one, then another, then another, and another. Eventually, he couldn't stop himself, and he ate all the berries on the bushes, as well as some of the leaves in the wood. To, to be fair, we've all had that morning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Where exactly. breakfast starts, yeah. and breakfast just doesn't <laughs> <Yeah>. end. <laughs> You're eating till 4 p.m. <laughs> You're like, holy shit, I'm out of oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> Where's all my dino eggs? <laughs> It is all just too delicious. Exhausted after eating so much, Bear laid down and went to sleep right in front of the empty bear bushes. 
But unknown to Bear, over the past 10,000 years, these berries had slowly been evolving to contain a toxic effect to keep animals from eating them. This is the furthest that any of the bush berry bushes of this type had gotten to keeping animals from eating them. But it was in fact still about 3,000 years from the berry bushes' end goal, world domination. <laughs> no, it just makes me think of the, have you ever watched, like, South Park? Yeah. Yeah, the little bushes were like, I'm here, boo. I'm here, boo. <laughs> yeah, and then, like, they turn up, like, this evil, like, like they're literally the main protagonist of, like, one, uh, sorry, antagonist of, like, one whole season of South Park. <laughs> these are these evil berries. <laughs> one day we will rule the world. If you were able to hear the bushes' thoughts as while it was getting eaten, you'd have heard something like, No! Not again! We were so close! Damn you, you fat furred ugly piece of manure! Our ancestors will avenge us! You'll see, you'll see! <laughs> also, unknown to Bear, through the evolution of these bears, these bears had minute traces of an LSD-type substance. If Bear had only eaten a few of these bears, he would have been fine, but because he ate so many and ate leaves in the wood, he had the wildest and longest trip that any being in the universe ever had. Essentially, Bear had like 6,000 <laughs> strips of LSD. <laughs> like, he should have overdosed and died. Thank God this is a fantasy world, though. Yeah. <laughs> this is even wilder than any of the Lupert, Stinian, Dantris race from the planet Ubilon 562 had ever had. And this race was one that was obsessed with LSD. Here, bags of LSD actually grew on wavy-looking trees throughout the entire planet. The strip would have made the Lubert, Sinian, Dantry's LSD trips look like a trip to the supermarket with their gr sweet great aunt who always, se always seems to have those hard candies that you like in her all of her pockets. Anyways. Gage, Gage <laughs> I gave Gage a Google Docs and I said, write me a backstory. And he legit just wrote this <laughs> random paragraph in there to further <laughs> insinuate just how high Bear really got. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, because Bear had so much LC from these plants that as soon as he lay on the ground to sleep, he began to trip. During this trip, he thought he was transported to a world that, again unknown to him, was called Oglemuth. Here, all around him were giant polar bears dressed in various clothes and speaking to each other in what Bear felt was a gibberish language. Also around him, on leashes, were what looked like naked, grown, full humans th that walked on four limbs and were talking in the bear language. What makes it funnier is that Atlas, or sorry, uh, Bear is an Atlas bear. Yeah. That was my original, like, archetype for him. So he's actually bigger than polar bears, and yeah. he's brown. So he would have felt so out of place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So Bear felt like he had spent years in this land and eventually learned how to speak the language that these polar bears are speaking, which is the common language. Then at one point, in the middle of when he was about to ask a polar bear whom he had a crush on out on a date, the world began to turn wavy and colors began to swirl around him and faces began to laugh at him in the clouds. Bear was cock-blocked by the universe. <laughs> oh god. Bear then fell on his back unconscious due to terror. When he woke up, he was in the hospital for polar bears with an IV in his arm. Eventually, he was able to leave and went to the house that he was renting and went back to sleep. When he woke up, he realized that he was lying on the ground in front of a bunch of empty berry bushes. Oh, what a tease. <laughs> <laughs> he wakes up after passing out. Everyone stops. He's going to wake up again. Nope, he's fucking in an IV in the world where he believes he's in, but he's not really in. And then he wakes up. Gage has been watching too much Inception. <laughs> dream oh, within a dream. Movie. Uh, so when he woke up, he realized he was lying in front of the ground and in front of the uh, empty berry, berry bushes. But he still retained his ability to speak and the intellect from when he thought was his time on Oglemouth. But it was the same day plus half a day as when he ate those berries. Feeling like he didn't belong in the cold cave with his family, he moved to the town of Frontier to open his tavern. To this day, Bear has refused to eat another berry for fear of a second traumatizing dream. That is the story of Bear. And that is 15 minutes off topic, but uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I thought that was amazing, and I got to play as Bear. Uh, we were doing this campaign that Gage mentioned about the prelude 
to uh, deal with demons, basically. Where we play those adventurers who took care of Lara's Daw. Uh, there was a bunch of us in that part. There was like seven of us that night. Like, that yeah. was insane. Yeah. But uh, we got to play high level characters. One day, one day, Blaze will be above level ten. But uh, um, <laughs> when being a monk starts to matter. But uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, that was fun, man. But uh, playing bear, I made him a cleric just so I could use spells again. But uh, it was it was crazy. Uh, he was a Russian bear. Please don't leave me. <laughs> Travel down the Great Pit. Uh, <laughs> I travel very far with strange humans uh, for no reason. <laughs> yeah, so basically they just were able to find a recently de- deceased being that turned undead. And that undead was going to lead them towards Lazarus Lazar- Las- Da. And they ended up finding him and killed him. Well, Bear... Uh, got distracted by a <laughs> yeah. giant hole in the ground, which he traveled down with another party member. His name I can't remember, but it was a dragonborn, mm-hmm. uh, f- played by a friend of ours named Kelly. But uh, we we traveled down this hole, and then Bear had to make his way back up alone. <laughs> uh, and then he showed up at the final boss fight, like <laughs> six rounds in. And he was like, uh, "I am here. I play now." <laughs> He's, I throw X. <laughs> so. Uh... After this entire war and the situation with Laris Da and the Undead, uh, Telthania has mostly been conflict-free with it for the last 200 or so years. Besides a few small skirmishes between small like hunting bands or orcs and human or orcs and elves or anything like that, but for for the most part, it's been peace. No like no major wars or anything like that. Until the Shardana. So that's the history of the war against humans and bear. <laughs> yeah, we just <laughs> threw in a random yeah. backstory there. Uh, so, I'm, uh, man, so uh, how long did that war last again, you said? Uh, I think it was about five years. Five years, yeah. And how long, uh, like, how big of a gap is there between the war and, like, our current campaign? I think it's just about 190, around... Like you said, like, 200, 200 190 years, years right? That, yeah. So, like, um, any of our characters, were they alive back then? Like, I think Ryan, Ryan the Room the High, yeah. I think he was alive at the time. Yeah, there's the chance that they might have been alive. That's pretty, something I have to actually talk to everyone about. Pretty young. I mean, they yeah. probably wouldn't remember much. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, that's pretty pretty intense shit. So, whenever Blaze brings it up, talking to Sora, or he was talking to Zix Krieger, yeah. uh, like, he always asks them, like, whoa, you're a, you're a human. Uh, you don't see you very often. Uh, that's why. Yeah, it's because they were decimated for being assholes yeah but which is funny because now king alan a what's his race again elf elf is a douchebag yeah and six Krieger is a pretty nice guy six Krieger's pretty decent pretty decent i think king ulysses is much nicer though yeah i like king ulysses pretty easy to fool though i couldn't return a book (laughs) oh yeah i'll fucking climb you up this wall don't worry about it oh man well, he, he King Ulysses does trust you guys because you guys did deliver his son to uh, King Alan safely, apparently, as far as he knows. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how much do you think King Ulysses will like us when he finds out that A, his son died halfway through that fucking beginning campaign, <laughs> and B, we stole 1,000 gold pieces from his secret holdings? And then C, I think we told him, but C, we also yeah. robbed several establishments. <laughs> yeah, he said you recovered for the robbing because he said I think he said that he'd pay for all of that stuff. Well, he's gonna owe a lot of money because Duncan's goody two shoes dwarf stole a very expensive set of yeah. armor, <laughs> and I did steal a lot of his clothes actually. Yeah, he stole like eight hats or something, <laughs> and I stole his uh, ten ways to make a crepe. Yeah, yeah. The limited edition one. I, I fucking knew he had it. I knew he had it. He was lying to me the whole time. <laughs> that lying bastard. Uh, so I think that's where we'll leave it on this history episode. Uh, thanks for joining us, and we'll get back to you on the next episode. Bye bye.